guys do something really interesting that I think Quentin Tarantino has made a career out of doing, which is changing an audience's perception of what an actor can do. Obviously, you did it with Robert Pattinson in Good Time, and I think you're doing it with Adam Sandler here. Are you guys just looking at actors differently than other directors are? Well, I, I mean, what are you seeing in these we're, guys? We're, I think we're, we're, you know, we're... It's difficult to imagine it today, what with the success of The Lighthouse and recent comic book movie ventures. But when Josh and Penny Safdie's indie thriller Good Time was released in 2017 to worldwide critical acclaim and a six minute standing ovation at the Cannes Festival, a shared thought passed through many a viewer's mind. And that was, I can't believe that's the guy from Twilight. I, I saw this, this, uh, this the still from the, um previous movie on the banner of a website and then kind of sent this sort of crazy obsessive uh, email saying, I know, I know, but this, this, this is supposed to happen, it's meant to be. Right. And uh, I, mean, I hadn't seen anything, I hadn't seen the trailer or anything, and we sort of agreed to do a movie which didn't exist. It was 2014 and the Safdie brothers were casting for their dark comedy, Uncut Gems, when Robert Pattinson cold emails them on little more than a feeling, pleading that they let him in on their next project, whatever it may be, knowing little more of their work than an image from a film on a website. It was an email that didn't just change the trajectory of Pattinson's career. It also challenged the brother director's signature approach to their creative process. Known best for their New York-centric underground neorealism cinema and their guerrilla-style filmmaking, the Safties had long opted for what the industry has coined street casting, casting amateur actors or often non-actors in their movies, a choice born half out of financial necessity, but half too out of an ardent desire to find real people with real lives that mirrored those of their characters, people who could tap into their own life experiences to garner performances that come from a genuine, unprocessed place. So it's her personal story, right? Why'd you decide to have her play her own role? It's her, you just said it, it's yeah. her personal story. The Safdie's film Heaven Knows What follows Harley Boggs, an itinerant drug addict performed by Ariel Holmes, the very woman whom the movie's story is about, conceived of and shot prior to her eventual rehabilitation. In fact, fascinated by Holmes' personal story, it was the Safdies who first commissioned Holmes to write her life into a memoir before then using that memoir as the basis for the film. Heaven Knows What was also the movie that prompted Robert Pattinson's elusive letter to the Safdies while they were preparing for Uncut Gems. The trouble Josh and Benny Safdie faced when they received Pattinson's email was that Uncut Gems, a movie about a compulsive gambler working within New York's Diamond District, didn't have a role in it fit for Pattinson to play. Beyond that, the brother directors had a reputation for turning down offers made to them by big agencies and mainstream studios. But after the festival circuit success of their prior films, the Safdies also knew, and their producers knew, that when an international star like Robert Pattinson emails you, you write back. As Benny Safdie has said, if you shut yourself off completely and aren't open to those kinds of conversations, you're not gonna learn anything. And we want to learn. My, uh, my Moved by Pattinson's <laughs> genuine magnetism and his desire to lose himself in a role, the Safdies decided to put Uncut Gems on the back burner for a few more years in order to craft a completely original good time around Pattinson. Their mission was to retroactively street cast him, to make an unmistakable celebrity vanish into a street smart and desperate con artist from Queens as though it were his story, the actor's story as though to reverse engineer their own ideology towards casting and storytelling. And they did. You know, with Rob, you know, he's not Connie. That's, he doesn't come from that world. So like, it was kind of a, an effort to, to for really for us, uh, to know how he would move in, this, in the narrative, was to just really know this character and for him to be able to pull from a life of character development. Okay, Jay, it's game night. You should be stretching out. Hang on, sorry. Goodbye. 
In many ways, Uncut Gems, which finally saw a 2019 release after a decade in the making, bears a cast ensemble born from a marriage between the Safdie brothers' street casting roots and their newfound resources. On one hand, the Safdies could now afford a star, and they saw something in Adam Sandler that they wanted for the role of Howard Ratner. We were lucky to follow his comedy special, 100% uh, Fresh, because he did 50 nights at three and a half hours of material every night. And our script was over 160 pages long. I mean, it's a shorter movie, but it was a lot, a lot of dialogue that he's supposed to say very quickly. And he just had the ability to take this, this kind of you know, Rodney Dangerfield style character and and turn him into a real life person. And stand like stand up comedians, it's like if somebody gets up and it sounds like they're just kind of reciting, yeah. it doesn't work. You know, but the the best kind of figure out a way to make it feel like, oh, I'm just up here saying all this stuff. Right. Like we're just having a great time, you know, and, and that's the key. But Uncut Gems, like past films the Safties have made, is still full of non-actors and first-time actors. Breakout actress Julia Fox, musician The Weeknd, sports radio host Mike Francesa, and most notably, retired basketball player Kevin Garnett, who much of the film's plot is centered around. Many of the smaller parts of the film, too, were played not by bit actors, but by real-life jewelers. And the Safdie's exterior sets were often left open, allowing real New Yorkers on the streets to walk freely through them. It wasn't that any of these decisions were essential to the film's story, but they were essential to the authenticity of the world that the Safdie brothers wanted to capture. And no matter how successful Josh and Benny Safdie become, the notion of authenticity and visceral immersion will likely remain the single most defining characteristic of their filmmaking. To identify that which makes the individual special and real, and to craft characters and stories not around what the reputations members of the cast bring as actors, but around who they are as human beings. You don't meet an actor and, and think about the movies they've done. You, you meet somebody and try to see them for who they are, mm -hmm. and then you try to build that out other, in another way. That just comes from our, you know, we've worked with a lot of non-professionals, first-time actors, so we're used to kind of meeting people for who they are and then building it out. Cause just like you. I've been trying to mediate, see the value in things before it all depreciate. I found myself protecting my mindset so I don't deviate. Then it start to pull me back, right in an egregious state. With these words, I leave.